For such an unassuming trickle of water, the whetstone has played an outsized role in the history of Marquette. Called by some a creek and some a brook, the whetstone has its headwaters in Marquette Township, and not far from those headwaters stood its first historical tie-in, the old Marquette Brewery. Founded in the 1870s by Sam Ely, who had master brewer George Rublin run the facility, the brewery actually went by several names over the years, Peter White later purchased it, employing Charles Miesky to run the facility, which used water from the whetstone in most of its products. The brewery continued operation for several decades until it ran into two different problems in the 19-teens. The first problem was that its most popular beer was called Dry Kaiser, which is German for Three Kings. When the beginning of World War I rolled around, the German name had to be changed rather quickly. The second problem faced by the brewery? Well, the start of Prohibition in Michigan in 1919. But that, believe it or not, is a topic for our next segment. Most of the original brewery buildings, all constructed out of Marquette sandstone along the winding path of the whetstone, were then torn down, although one still stands, along with a wall or two being used at Gilbert's Dairy. Once it left the brewery location, the whetstone found itself playing several different roles. For many years, residents from all over the city would bring their refuse to the top of the Creeks Valley and throw it down the hill, thereby making whetstone an unofficial city dump. The whetstone also had a small amount of fish in it, which means that residents could be seen trying to hook a trout or two in the day. And it also served as the demarcation line between South Marquette and the rest of the city. If you tried to cross the whetstone at the Champion Street Bridge, you may have found yourself in trouble, especially if you were a North Marquette boy looking to date a South Marquette girl. All that changed in 1963 when the US-41 bypass was built over the creek to help alleviate traffic congestion in downtown. The Whetstones Valley was partially filled in and the brook moved underground to allow thousands of cars to make their way down the highway on a daily basis. In fact, the Whetstone then made the rest of its journey to Lake Superior in a drainage pipe where it emptied into the lake at Gaines's Rock. Now, Gaines's Rock was named after William Gaines, who originally came to the UP to mine copper. After he was injured in a mining accident, he and his wife Mary moved to Marquette in 1855, where he was then hired to tend the gardens at the home of railroad baron Heman Ely, who lived at what's now the corner of Fisher and Front Streets. The gardens extended down to the whetstone and to the big rock jutting into the lake. It's there that Gaines had a small home and where he lived until passing away in 1903 at the age of 80. That area then became the South Rail Yards. When the city of Marquette purchased the holdings of the Canadian National Railway in the late 1990s, those rail yards were eventually turned into Founders Landing. One of the first things the city did was to free the last several hundred yards of the whetstone from its underground prison, where since 2004 it has burbled under a bridge and down a little waterfall before eventually ending up in Lake Superior, the latest twist in the big history of a small waterway.